There is nothing wrong with your television. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are now controlling the transmission. It's time to make a display board. My name's Marcel and this is Snakeworks. Now I've always wanted some sort of display board to take photos of my miniatures and scenery on. I've looked at all the pre-made off the shelf options but they are all prohibitively expensive. I've considered using mats but they just don't seem to give you that nice 3D painted texture and feel. So to change this I think it's about time I built my own. Let's jump in. So first up we need a suitable piece of a baseboard. I took a little trip to B&Q and asked them to cut me a piece of 4 foot by 2 foot square board into two 2 foot square boards. One of them is being saved for later. I think this is around 12 millimeters thick. Next I shall mark the board out into a grid of 2 inch squares. I considered doing 1 inch but I didn't want to be working on this well into 2024. I marked off the edge in 2 inch sections. To do this I used my massive metal ruler and a permanent marker. I then rotated the board 90 degrees and did this for the next edge. I did this another two times and that meant every edge was marked. So why is drawing with a permanent marker just so satisfying? It just feels so good until you get it on your hands. Then with my massive metal ruler, it needs a name by the way and if you've got any suggestions then please let me know, I began joining those lines up. There should be 12 along each edge. Again, like before, I then rotated the board and drew the other lines, creating my grid. I was lucky in that my lines were correct. In the past, I've linked up the wrong marks, giving me a badly staggered grid. How that happened, I've no idea. I was probably half asleep. This is what it looks like at this stage. It looks like a giant chessboard or something. Does a Warhammer 40,000 themed chess set exist? I'm surprised a Horus Heresy one doesn't. Now when I saw that checker pattern I'd come up with, it made me think maybe I wanted to do a nice black and white checkered floor. Like some sort of fancy floor tiled area. But I thought it would be best to stick with the plan. So I then wanted to put some cork tiles on. I needed some cork for that, so took a trip into the city where I found these. A pack of six one foot square cork tiles. I think they cost around 12 pounds. Not a bad price really. I think they're for flooring or something. The cork tiles came in a nice shrink wrapped package and they were the perfect thickness for what I had in mind. I think these ones are around 5mm thick, I just eyeballed them in the shop. What I have noticed is that they smell really rather strange. I just couldn't stop sniffing them. Now that smell <laughs> reminded me of something. A smell from my childhood or something. Have you ever had that? A familiar smell but you just can't place where you've smelt it before. Out of the package, this is what the cork tile looks like. It doesn't look like your typical cork. This one looks more like some sort of mushed up wood bark. It reminds me of a walnut dashboard in an old Bentley. I know that because I went in one once at the Royal Norfolk Show when I was a lad. So the next thing to do was mark out more 2 inch wide sections on the cork tiles. Again I did this down the horizontal and the vertical, much like the outer limits. We control the horizontal and the vertical. Then again we joined up all those marks with a ruler. Not as clumsy or random as my previous metal ruler, this one's a bit more elegant. With all those marks applied, you have a nice grid on your cork tile. I say yours, what I mean is mine, but it will be yours if you go and make one of these yourself. 
I laid out all the tiles on my board just to double check everything matched up. It all fit and there were no problems. There didn't seem to be any, so we can move on. Now I think it was rather convenient that those cork tiles were exactly one foot square. Well I say exactly, they were actually just a few millimetres short. But that helped me out in the long run. Uh, you'll see why later on. Now long time viewers will remember our good friend Andy the Knife. He's about to be retired from miniature hobby duties, but he will still be able to perform on projects such as this. I've given him a nice new blade, so he should be pretty sharp, unlike his previous owner. Now, interestingly, for the first time in what seems like months, there was a bit of sunshine outside. Snakeworks Jr. and I were amazed. Uh, they've bought a new car, the people over the other side of the road. Very interesting. Using Andy the knife, I then cut the cork along the lines we previously marked out. It took around two or three passes to get a nice clean cut. I didn't want to just force it through and end up with an untidy gash. I've seen enough of those in my life. So after a few slicings, I had these, some little strips of cork. Luckily, I didn't slip with the knife and do myself a mischief. We can't, however, leave it there as we now need to cut them in the other direction. Now, it was at this stage I was convinced there must have been a faster or easier way to do this. There must have been some way of just running something along there and leaving an indent in the cork, like a pizza cutter or something. It would have been much faster than cutting each individual tile out individually. Did we say individual twice there? Anyway, if you have any idea what I could have used to have done that to save myself some time, then please keep it to yourself so I don't feel a twat. No, I'm only joking. If you know, then please let us all know in the comments below and save everyone else a load of time. Save the others the pain that I endured. Right. We're now just slicing the other way and cutting those two inch square individual tiles off the scripts. I can feel my knife blade is already starting to dull. Again, a bit like the previous owner. Some of you might be wondering who I'm talking about, but if you know, you know. Now here's something weird. In the cork tile, there seems to be some sort of warp creature. You can see what look like teeth and everything. Maybe it was a mouse that got crushed up in the tile creation process or something. It's very odd. After what felt like 40 hours of mind-numbing tile slicing, we had a big pile of tiles. Now, they remind me of hobnobs. For those of you who don't know, hobnobs are a very tasty biscuit in the UK. The chocolate versions are even better than that. I really fancy some chocolate hobnobs now. I'm going to go and get some. So this is a two inch square piece of cork tile. It's pretty good, hey? I didn't just make these, by the way. I made something else. I made four of these four inch square tiles. I will be adding these in specific places on the board to add a little variety. It wasn't to save me a few extra cuts and time, honest. Another thing I did to a handful of the tiles was to give them a crack. I do enjoy it when you can see cracks as they provide a little visual interest. I only wanted a few though, I didn't want to overdo it. This will be to simulate where something heavy has hit the ground and broken it. Now I think they call it adding realism, adding a story, adding a narrative. I just call it details. They also say the devil is in the details. Well, I've had a good look and I couldn't see him anywhere. Thought that was him then. Right, so for the next stage, we need some glue. I'm decanting some PVA into a yogurt pot as my container. I would have squeezed it out, but the nozzle is blocked again. I add just enough water to get the right consistency. I needed it to be watered down enough to be applied with a brush. I think I ended up with it too watered down, but let's just go with it for now, eh? 
What I then did was paint some of this watered down PVA onto the board and then just plonked the tile down on top. I didn't even have to weigh them down. I didn't want the glue too thick as I felt they might not sit flush enough with the surface. I began with the big one. And then I proceeded to stick a few little ones down using the same method as with the big one. Now I bet you're all going to think that the mixture was just too thin and they all started to peel off. But they didn't. It actually worked. I do have to admit though, re-watching this footage, I'm surprised they stuck down too. I also felt I needed to get the cracked tiles on early so I could be sure they were spaced evenly around the board. I didn't want to just forget them and have them all bunched up together at the end like a group of Warhammer players in a nightclub. My plan was to put one cracked tile on each row of the board. There were 12 rows, so that was 12 cracked tiles. Pretty easy stuff, eh? I have to admit, I think the cracked tiles looked pretty good. And after all the individual tiles have been glued down, I have this. It reminds me of some sort of decorative feature that you might buy from the range or B&M. Do they even have shops like that in the USA? If they do, what are they called? Anyway, it needed to dry here, so I left it overnight. While waiting for my glue to dry, I decided to watch Jay over at Eons of Battle tackle a drop pod. I do enjoy a bit of Eons of Battle, so go check them out for yourself, if you get the chance. But that's why I didn't like Mini Vehicles, because it made them such humongous projects, they would take forever. Now recently, I found myself in the range rather a lot. Not for decorative items, but for hobby odds and ends, bits and bobs. I was, however, disappointed to find that they don't sell pipettes anymore. Bastards. I went to buy some the other day, and they'd all gone. I might write them a snotty letter. Dear Mr. Range, I am very upset that you don't sell pipettes anymore. Right, so the glue is now dry, and none of the tiles have peeled off or anything, so that's a big win. However, I don't want to leave it there, as I have another plan I want to enact before I begin painting. I want to get these sealed with some more watered down PVA. Cork is known for how much paint it can devour. Like me, and biscuits. When that PVA is all applied, I then have to leave it overnight again. Luckily, I wasn't in a rush or anything with this project. I guess to speed it up, I could have turned the heating on or just used a hairdryer. Now talking about putting the heating on, has anyone noticed how bloody chilly it is this summer? It's August now, and I'm feeling a bit nippy in my t-shirt, I guess I could just put a jumper on. Normally I'm sweating my tits off just sitting here. Can you remember when I filmed that uh, Horus Heresy Tactical Squad video last summer on the hottest day of the year? I even had to take my hat off, and I had my own homemade cut-off vest as well. It's beautiful. So if I was just talking about the weather in a YouTube video, so, I decided to push the boat out and bought a cheap tin of spray paint to prime it with. According to international law, all non-branded spray paints must be terrible, and this was no exception. It says it's a grey primer, but to me it looks like a sort of weird green colour. Hang on a minute, is this what they rebrand into spray cans of Mechanicus Standard Grey? That's a green colour too, I think. Because I'm a f***ing idiot, I decided to prime the board on the windiest day of the year. I was lucky my wig didn't blow off, let alone get the paint on tidily. It took a lot longer than I expected, and I think half the spray paint ended up on the neighbour's car. Well, he deserves it anyway after all the cat shit that I've had to clean up from his filthy beast. Eagle-eyed viewers will notice my garden looks like a bit of a jungle, and that's because I'm waiting for the lawn mowers to go on sale. I refuse to buy one until they do. After that primer was applied, we have this. I actually think it looks like a stone slab. Also, that grey looks a lot more like grey than green now, so maybe it's not the same stuff as the Mechanica standard grey. 
Now there's a lot of rebranding going on in this hobby. The one I always notice is the airbrush compressor. They're all just the same one with different stickers stuck on them. I could tell you stories about other things, but we'll save those for another day. Now here we have something really rather interesting. It's an aerosol stone effect by Mastodon. Mastodon. I've never heard of this company before, but I shall be putting my faith in them to deliver a wonderful, genuine faux stone effect. This time it's granite grey, but the colour doesn't matter as it shall be painted over. I then applied this stone effect to the board. Sadly, the wind had died down by now, so I didn't accidentally get any on my neighbour's car. This one went on really quickly and had a nice satisfying squirting feel to it. Here's what it looked like when it was applied. It has a sort of squiggly look to it. I have to admit, I was expecting a more sort of a dotty sandy look. Oh well, it's texture and let's see what happens when we paint it, shall we? Now I need to add in here, we left it overnight again. I wouldn't want to mess around with this texture stuff when it wasn't quite dry. I reckon that would make a right mess. It'll swirl up and go into a, like a gunky paste, I reckon. We need to do a base coat. And I could have bought yet another black aerosol, but I cheaped out here and bought this tube of black acrylic paint. It was about three quid. Again, this comes from, you guessed it, the range. I live only a few minutes walk away from it, you see. I then thinned this Mars black paint down a fair bit and gave the board a bloody good coat of it. I made sure that it ran down into the cracks. I didn't want you to be able to see any unpainted bits in the gaps between the tiles. It was actually really nice to be able to just grab a big brush and slop the paint on. It was very therapeutic. Again, after all that fiddling, it was really rather wet. So again, I decided to leave it overnight. Is that three overnight drying time sessions already? Now again, you could probably crack out the old hairdryer here and speed things along a bit if you were in a hurry. But I had plenty of other things to be getting on with. Also, I seem to find that hair dryers make things dry in a strange way. You get weird sort of coloured effects going on. Dries like chalky or powdery. Has anyone else ever noticed that? Now here we can see my scissors on the tile. This is one of those moments where I have no idea why I took the footage. My gut tells me it was to show the paint is dry. But why the scissors and why the cocktail stick? Maybe I wasn't feeling well that day. Anyway, the point is the paint's dry. Now I picked this paint up and wondered why it didn't feel very heavy at all. Turns out it's light grey. Vallejo model colour light grey to be precise. Using a big flat brush, its tip reminds me of Guile's hair from Street Fighter 2, I then gave the board a damn good dry brushing all over. I wasn't too worried if it went a bit thick in places, as I can sort that out later. This took quite a while actually. With that first dry brush layer applied, we had this. That texture doesn't look half bad, does it? It's coming out quite nice. Now a friend of mine saw this board and suggested it would make a fantastic dungeon tile board for games of Dungeons and Dragons. What sort of geeks would play Dungeons and Dragons, eh? Don't look at that. <laughs> or that. For a white paint, I found this. It's Vallejo model colour foundation white. I have no idea what the difference is to normal white, but I have a feeling using it will answer that question. It's crap. I actually thought it would cover well, but it's really weak. I felt I would never use this paint again now, so proceeded to dry brush the entire board with it. As it was so weak, it took a couple of coats to even show up. I should have just used the normal Vallejo white. After applying more coats than a footballer's locker room, I had this, a nicely highlighted board. The white paint has really brought out that texture, even if it did take ages to bring out. Now I feel I need to get to the bottom of this foundation white. 
What the hell is it? I'm going to go and look it up. Okay, so general consensus is, is that it's a primer, not a paint. Why didn't they just call it, you know, a primer instead of foundation white? Here it is, look. Horrible old stuff. Right, so remember that Mars Black acrylic paint? Rather than using my expensive Nuln Oil wash, I'm going to make myself a wash out of this. I just thinned it down with a load of water and added a little fairy liquid. That's dish soap to you Americans. It might be dish soap here. I then liberally applied this wash to the board. Now, can you see it's turning a weird brown colour? That's not quite black, is it? I wonder if it's the black paint not being black or something else is happening there. Very strange. With that black wash applied, guess what we're doing next? We're waiting for it to dry overnight. I think that's four overnighters now. Oh well, let's just get on with it. Now, I strongly suggest, if you're making one of these display boards, do it alongside another project, as you do not want to be waiting on this thing's drying times. You could just work on it up until one of those overnight drying times and then move on to something else. I guess you could just sit there and watch it, but that would be about as boring as watching paint dry. I'll get my coat. When the wash is dry, we have this. It's so dry, we can finger the board with my hand dinosaur. Well, that's what I call it anyway. Snakeworks Jr. finds it very funny. Now, as much as I hate to say it, we return to that foundation white. I might as well use this bottle up and throw it away. Rubbish stuff. And again, we return to Guile the dry brush. Amusingly, my friend never knew how to pronounce Guile and called him Julie when Street Fighter 2 came out, which to this day I still find funny. Fuck Julie. I can sort of see it. Julie. Now again, back then, we always called Ryu Ryu. Only now do I call him by his correct name of Ryu. That reminds me, we need to do a video on bad Warhammer pronunciation. Now speaking of bad pronunciation, that's something we talk about sometimes in our lovely Discord server. If you want to come and join a friendly Discord server that doesn't have a paywall, then check out the link up here somewhere, or the one down below somewhere. Here's what the board now looks like with that second white dry brush applied. It does actually look to me like a dungeon tile now, so my friend wasn't far off, was he? They actually look like heavy flagstones or something. Sometimes I amaze even myself. Alrighty then, so we now need a black to paint the rim of the board. I don't just want to leave it half painted cork and bare wood, you see. That would look very unprofessional. I then began a long rimming session. It was a lot of rim to paint on this board, and I was quite sore afterwards. I was in an awkward position the whole time. Now, while I put my paints away, I just want to give a massive loving shout out to all my patrons and channel members. Dan Yallop, Lee Blackley, Donald, Pine Tree, Bob Zilla, Charles Marlowe, Andrew Marrington and Dr. Lee. I wouldn't be able to do this without you guys, so thank you all very much, and I love you all. Now, before we check out the finished article, I just wanted to show you this. I do apologize, they're very crackly. Interestingly, on those hobnobs, it says underneath it, it's the OT one with milk chocolate. However, if you look at the ingredients on the back here, it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Darren. If you are enjoying the content on the channel, then please consider joining us on Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. Okay, so without further ado, let's check out the finished article, shall we? So here is my finished display board, and I reckon it's come out rather well indeed. The build was super simple, and the only time-consuming part was cutting out all those individual tiles. Oh, and all that overnight drying time. The painting itself was an absolute breeze. Speaking of breezes, 
I wouldn't recommend using aerosol cans out in the wind like I did. I think I wasted most of it. I was really happy with how the dry brushed texture came out and it matches my other urban basing style 100%. I'm really pleased with it. I've considered adding some details like blood, but at the end of the day, it's just a base for the details. So that's what the things I put on it should be doing. I really recommend making one of these for yourself if you have the time and the inclination. You could even play some little games on it. Expect to see more of that soon. If you want to see some more scenery tutorials, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching.